symptom of a much deeper problem. At Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, delegates from 44 allied and associate countries arrived for the opening of the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. Our story begins in 1944. With World War II coming to an end, the Allied Nations met at Bretton Woods, New Hampshire, to create a new financial system which would stabilize the world once the war ended. With America poised to enter a golden age of prosperity, the U.S. dollar was chosen as the world's reserve currency. The Bretton Woods system was created after the Second World War at the Bretton Woods Conference in New Hampshire. And rather than using gold as a means of exchange between uh, countries, as was the case under the old gold standard, the dollar was going to be used. Um, the dollar was chosen because back then it was as good as gold. Under this new system, countries agreed to fix their currencies to the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar would be tied to gold at a price of $35 per ounce. This meant that countries around the world could trade their currencies for U.S. dollars, which they could then exchange for gold. This created a system where all currencies were essentially backed by gold. To avoid the logistics of shipping physical gold across the world, when countries did exchange their currencies for gold, it was usually stored safely in the U.S. Under the Bretton Woods system, you could exchange your currency or your dollars for gold. Now, it only applied to foreign countries and central banks. And we began to run budget deficits. We were running the Great Society program under Lyndon Johnson. We were fighting a war in Vietnam. And all of a sudden, we were running these deficits, and countries were changing their dollars. Uh, and they said they wanted gold. And it began with the French, and then it started to spread. With all the new spending programs in the United States, other countries became concerned that the U.S. was spending more money than it had gold reserves. They started exchanging their dollars for gold and demanded physical delivery as they felt that there were more dollars being printed than the gold that backed it. To prevent this outflow of gold from American vaults, President Nixon called for an emergency suspension of the gold convertibility system. I have directed the Secretary of the Treasury to take the action necessary to defend the dollar against the speculators. I have directed Secretary Connolly to suspend temporarily the convertibility of the dollar into gold or other reserve assets. All of the problems that we see today in the monetary system are a direct result of the decision made in August 15, 1971, you know, to abandon a uh, fixed link back to gold. What gold did is it provided discipline on governance, provided discipline on government spending. Under the old system, if you ran a budget deficit, then what would happen is gold would flow out of your country until there was a balance again. Well, without any gold backing, then countries ran perpetual deficits. So if you look at, for example, this country, from 1971 on, the U.S. has never run a surplus. Ever since we went off the gold standard, it's just been perpetual stimulus. Good times, bad times, always run a deficit. What led uh, Nixon to abandon the gold standard in 1971? And although he claimed it was temporary, we've been waiting 40 years, uh, we're still off of it. We ran up uh, huge deficits during the 1960s. We had the guns and butter economy where the government was both simultaneously fighting a war in Vietnam abroad. In addition, we were funding manned missions uh, to the moon and the whole space program. We were creating more money than we had gold reserves to back it up. And a lot of our foreign creditors saw this and began to demand gold uh, rather than their Federal Reserve notes because they sensed that Washington simply didn't have enough gold uh, to make its commitment to back uh, the dollar. By removing the link between gold and the U.S. dollar, President Nixon created a system where all currencies were backed by nothing. This is what is known as a fiat currency. Fiat currency is currency that's backed by nothing except government promises. The word fiat is a Latin word, and it basically means currency that's circulating by force. If people have confidence in that currency, and if there's enough government force, that will enable the currency to circulate for a period of time until people lose confidence in the currency. There is 
no nation on this planet that currently uses uh, money. We all use currency. Uh, there will come a day when everybody knows the difference. Money is a medium of exchange, and the way it has evolved is that it's always something of intrinsic value until the modern age. When the politicians say, well, we don't need anything of intrinsic value anymore. All we need is political decree. We can say, this is money. This piece of paper is money. Now money has a new characteristic. But underneath it all, there's the same concept in place that nobody ever seems to challenge. And that is that governments have a right to declare something of, of no value to be money and you must accept it. That's really the problem and uh, it's still the problem today. It's destroying the economies of the world. With currencies no longer backed by anything real or tangible, their value was measured only in relation to each other. And because countries with relatively weak currencies can make products cheaply, countries devalue their own currencies to make them desirable trading partners. Every paper currency measures itself against the dollar. So if the dollar goes down, the other central banks respond to that and they try and intervene in the foreign exchange markets to ensure that the impact doesn't hit their domestic economies.